Steve Slaughter. Here we are again talking about the human body and talking about energy, talking about the immune system. And I'd like to address this thing before we go much further is how do you eat? How do you choose your foods? And address that kind of poignantly. Um, I uh, like Steve choose my foods for performance whether it's athletic performance mental clarity job performance um, leader of a family performance uh, leader at work it, it, I don't eat like I used to for flavor uh, although flavor is important because I can't eat something I don't like for very long without getting tired of it but I uh, I can't eat emotionally anymore, um, although I'll, I'll break down occasionally and have some ice cream because I like it. Um, root beer float? No, I don't have a root beer float. But I can't eat because I'm um, lonely or because I'm frustrated or because I'm angry. Um, I, I just can't do that anymore. I usually have a trigger in my head that says, you know, you're eating for the wrong reason if I do that. And that doesn't mean I don't, don't make mistakes. I mean, I'm not a Nazi when it comes to eating a certain way. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm much better than I used to be. And I simply eat to feel good, performance-wise. Not to be stimulated, not to be, um, get a full feeling. Um, I don't want that over full feeling. I want to be able to eat something and not too long afterwards go to a job, go ride my bicycle, um, go, go for a walk with the kids. You know, I don't want to be um, burdened by my, my intake of food. Okay, so if I, if I brought you to a point of saying, we both, in agreement, we have a past that we've stuck in a closet that no one will see. Yeah, yeah. And we were both athletes, at one time okay. and the older I get the better I used to be that's an easy one True. so you're riding a bike how many miles a day do you suppose oh it's not that many miles a day maybe 20 miles a day but um, it accumulates longer on weekends uh -huh. so so when we start talking about health being physically fit mentally and physically and spiritually do you find or describe to me how body treats disease or, uh, yeah, go ahead, from, from an energy basis. Everybody knows when you get sick and something uh, pounds on your immune system, whether it's a virus or a bacteria, um, you get run down. Your immune system requires a lot of energy to do its job. Um, the great thing about it is you have quite a bit of energy stores and a simple virus uh, which is not this recent one but um, or bacteria shouldn't be so hard on your body that it takes you out of the battle and the reason being is because you should have enough energy stores or you should be eating well enough that your body your immune system has everything it needs to fight the invaders uh, whether it's develop uh, proteins that are antibodies that um, are able to search through your body and find those invaders quickly and do their job. You've got to have energy to do that. Quite simply, um, you know when you don't have the energy to do it and you know when you get run down and you know what happens to your life um, if your immune system isn't strong. So, of the areas that we could discuss that drives your immune system down, uh, the effect of stress. Yeah, stress has been known forever and even when I was teaching biology I would try to talk to my students about the effect of stress and how um, your body's ability to come up with um, a certain amount of energy quickly is a well-known fact. It's called the fight-or-flight syndrome. But stress in just a low um, 
baseline amount throughout your body, throughout your life. Constant does nothing but wear your body down because in order to perform under the certain amounts of stress that you have in your life, your body does crazy things. And one of the crazy things is a, a chemical release called cortisol, which basically is like prednisone that numbs your immune system and makes it so it's not able to fight things off. And it's a fact, we, we've known that for years. It's not anything unusual. So you can't fight um, disease if stress levels are too high. You won't have the energy to do it. You'll have used it for stress. You will have used it for a constant low grade level of fight or flight syndrome in your life all the time and it'll wear you down. So if we could just draw a kind of analogy here. Uh, people function just below the, the wellness, if we drew a line, they function below that and they take a, a pill of some kind, it gets them above it, but they never really feel good. Would that be a fair analogy? Just yeah. kind of zip along yep. through there, never feeling good, never feeling to where they couldn't go to work and when they get to work, they can't really perform at the level that we want them to talk about. And, and you and I discussed a little while ago this 80-20 rule, which seems to be in every business's life, where 80% of the work is done by 20% of the people. If I suggested that through a proper program of eating and getting energy, long-term energy, and quieted down the anxiety, what do you think would be the overall effect on a business in terms of performance? That's a no-brainer. Um, if if my employees, if I had employees, um, if they got a good night's rest and they didn't have to take a tranquilizer to get rid of the anxiety or to sleep uh, and a stimulant in the morning because they didn't sleep uh, and they ate appropriately so they had energy levels that were um, appropriate for their day that lasted the whole day with some you know understandable ups and downs because um, workload may be higher on some days than others the production I, you could possibly take a, a percentage of that 80 that weren't doing anything and convert them to the 20 and increase that 20 if you could teach them and motivate them into becoming part of that 20%. So if we change their attitude about themselves, about how they view themselves, when they look in the mirror, they can say, I really want to take better care of that. Do you think we could? that would have an effect on their diet? If they understood what were, was proper and that, as you and I both know, processed foods are of no value. Uh, Fast foods, no value. So we've got to teach them to eat foods that burn clean and give them ATP, long-term energy, without the short-term gain and without the incidents where we're creating a need for insulin. Because I think as you get the insulin, you get the inflammation. Okay. And if, if, if we could show that and have people literally change and see the effect how long do you think that, that they would stay with that if they had the support of guys like you and I who, look, I, I've been around you for a long time. You're 60 years old and you're fit. And you, you hold yourself out, I don't think in a, in a way that you say, look at me, but you are an example. You are an extension of your belief system. And I think that's one of the neatest things that people look at the two of us and say, you guys are fit. What's it take to be like that? They may not ask, and, and I know that in my case, it's really quite simple. Nothing that I do is really difficult. Well, how about you? We both agree it's a package deal. Um, you've got to put it together and you've got to um, do a lot of little things, and as you do, 
they were s they will synergistically come together and make you healthier and more productive and, and better um, at what you do. Nutritionally um, is is, a, is a, just a piece of it, but let's start where we where we can. You know, let's let's um, start from the beginning. Let's figure out something that we can do. Uh, let's change the way we eat. Mm -hmm. Let's do it for 21 days. Let's see if we can make it a habit. And then let's see if we can put some other good things together with, with it to make it a lifestyle. And if you do, um, and then you add exercise a little bit at a time, enjoyable exercise that clears your head, makes you think clearly, um, even spiritually at times. You're, you're all looking for that spiritual edge to where you actually have a change of heart so you treat people better. We all want that. So let's say we start with our nutrition so we can get up in the morning without a stimulant, start our day, get a good uh, healthy short exercise that opens our head um, and then we start thinking about how can we mentally be more stable uh, we want mental clarity, we want to be better at our jobs, we want to have a clear head. And then let's talk about emotional. Um, being able to be available to help other people and not so caught up in our own um, emotional baggage that that's all we think about, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not much but I'm all I think about, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got to get past um, that we all have our stuff, you know. Needless to say, um, I rode my bike yesterday with a good friend and um, we talked about we all have our emotional baggage. We have places to start. Some places are easier to start for you than they are for me. It's not hard for me to start nutritionally because I believe it. It's not hard for me to start spiritually because I need it. Mm -hmm. And I can put those two together combine some physical activity and I have a killer package for a great day and it doesn't happen every day but it happens more days than it doesn't and I can count on it and it's enough to get me through um, you mentioned the other day that anger was something that we needed to give up and, and we're gonna end with this how much damage does being angry at somebody, even yourself. What kind of an effect does that have on your performance? And I want to talk specifically about your immune system. Anger, like resentment, is one of those things uh, we've been, we've heard it called, it's a poison. You take it and you expect the other person to die. Um, anger is like stress and they're, they kind of complement each other. If you're angry and you cannot solve that anger problem um, through peace, spiritually, um, through acknowledging your weaknesses, through um, repenting, changing, you know, turning about face and, and going the other direction from somebody that's com something that's completely destroying you like anger, then your whole body's not going to be healthy. And if you are healthy, you're going to be alone in the gym and you're going to be mad at everybody else in the world because you can't be angry around other people for very long and keep any kind of a, a relationship. So anger is as destructive um, as bad food, as um, bad knees, you know, <laughs> it's debilitating. So to have really complete healing from a natural side, we need to have forgiveness, not only for ourselves, but for someone who is, we see as having done us wrong. So if we can forgive the two of us, right. that allows the body to heal. Steve, we'll pick this up next time, and thank you for joining me. Thanks.